Hogwarts Castle, a 5 inch gauge locomotive, part 26, finding the best way to make the brake beams. The braking system on this locomotive is not going to be functional. The brake shoes and hangers are made from brass, and although when they're fully trimmed up they will look okay, brass is not an ideal material for brake shoes. Here's the braking assembly from the tender, and this is made from steel and cast iron for the shoes. Brakes on a 5 inch gauge locomotive are never a good idea if they work, because when you put them on, the wheels lock and the engine slides down the rails, and flats are worn on the wheels. It's a much better idea to put the brakes on the passenger trucks, because the weight of the passengers puts a lot of weight on the wheels that have been braked, therefore the entire train will slow to a halt with a minimum of slippage. I need to make three of these. These are the brake beams that pull the brakes onto the wheels, and even though they're never going to pull the brakes onto the wheels of this locomotive, they need to look the part. I was going to make the beams originally using some half inch by quarter of an inch steel, but because the brakes are non-functional, it seemed like a total waste of time. Then I went up to Blackgate's engineering, and Phil showed me these, laser-cut tender brake beams and hangers. In recent years, laser cutting has come a long way. The finish on the edges of these components is quite amazing. To start the job, all I need to do is separate the parts that I need, so it's over to the bandsaw to cut them out of the matrix. Health and safety warning, when using a bandsaw, always keep your fingers away from the blade. The problem is not when the bandsaw's cutting the metal, it's when it breaks through at the other side, if you just watch this. Automatically you put pressure on the piece of work to push it through the blade, but when it comes through the other side, it will come through quite a long way, and if your fingers are there, they get cut by the blade, so keep your fingers well clear of the blade. Also, when using a bandsaw for cutting out many components, just make sure that you keep your concentration level high. One down and two to go. Here I'm cutting the next of the beams out. I'm not going to use the hangers because the scale hangers that I'm using on the locomotive are perfectly fine. For this job I just need the long bits, which are the beams. Maybe the other parts will come in useful, so I'm not going to throw them away. I'll put them in my box of strange spare parts that might come in useful one day. The alternative to cutting out these laser cut parts is really long winded. It would entail chopping up three pieces of half inch bar to the right length, putting them in the machine vice clamp together, milling them to shape, and then turning the ends. Not to mention the big clean up operation, removing the milling marks. I suppose I could make them out of wood, but wood underneath a steam locomotive where there's a fire and an ash pan is never really a good idea. I did consider it for about a millisecond and then thought, don't be silly. But I must say that these laser cut parts really make the job simple. You can get laser cut anything now for locomotives, coupling rods and even frames. Much easier than clamping the frames together and using a hacksaw. Over now to the one inch belt sander just to clean up the roughly sawn edges. All I'm doing is just touching them on the sanding belt just to remove the marks left by the bandsaw blade. My 4 inch belt sander and the 1 inch belt sander in the outer part of the workshop get a lot of use. And just off camera is a pot of water because obviously friction is generating heat so I need to cool the parts frequently. Although there's not much heat being currently generated by this job. And in no time at all, all three of the brake beams are cleaned up. And here they are. The next part of the process is to mount these in a 4 jaw chuck and turn the ends of the brake beams down so that they fit in the brake hangers. I will also have to drill some holes in the beams to take the clevises. This is about as far as I want to take the job in this video. The machining of the ends of the brake beams will be in a separate video very shortly, and in the same video I'll show the drilling of the holes for the clevises. I called into the steam workshop to pick up some parts for the locomotive, and Simon Hudson presented me with a bag full of these. Old steam fittings, and attached to each steam fitting is a label which says what the problem is and what's required. This is the top fitting of a water gauge, and the inspection plug's sheared off, so I'll need to drill that out and make a new one. Also, the owner of these parts needs another nut making because he's lost the one for the lower fitting. You can see what's required by reading what's on the piece of paper. 
it says replace blanking plug extra glass nut required and once I find out what the thread is I'll just make one all the other fittings are standard globe valves made by CME engineering by the look of it and they're quite old because he doesn't paint them red anymore this is a bit of a non-starter though because the problem with all of them is leaks and passes when closed. The only problem with a job like this is by the time I've dismantled the valve to remachine the shaft and the seat the cost of that is going to be about the same price as buying a new valve. I think I will advise Simon that it's best to tell the customer just to buy some new valves. Much simpler all round. These steam valves have come off quite a large miniature locomotive. But one of the valves is just a quarter by 40 globe valve. That's on the bench at the top of the picture. So much as I would like to profiteer by repairing all these valves, I really think it's better for the owner of the engine to just buy some new ones. But I will repair the water gauge. Really could have used one label for all of the valves because they all say the same. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.